Stephen, those who would believe that only the physical is real, whether they are scientists or philosophers, have to confront the problem of consciousness, what it feels like inside. And one of the ways they do it is to claim that consciousness is an illusion. What do you say? Well, I change my mind every other day on, on this topic. Uh, but I am quite sympathetic to the view that that while consciousness itself is not an illusion, I don't want to claim that, that certain very kind of popular, seductive ways of thinking about consciousness involve an illusion, that we are, once we start thinking philosophically about our, our minds and conscious experience, we find ourselves very quickly drawn to a sort of picture, if you like, of what the mind is like, that really does involve an illusion. So you say that consciousness per se itself is not an illusion, it's real, but there are further things that we uh, uh, imagine about consciousness which are illusions. So what are some of those? Well, it's very tempting, I think, to think of consciousness as involving something necessarily or essentially private. Mm. Um, we can keep things private, certainly. Um, you know, I might keep a marble private in my hand. I, I, so you can't see it. But it is in principle possible for me to show you the marble. My brain is locked up inside my cranium. You can't see it. But with the aid of fiber optic probes, you could, you could gain a glimpse of what's inside. Minds, on the other hand, seem to be private in a much stronger sense. Yeah. You know, I've got a pain perhaps or some kind of conscious experience, a colour experience, and I'm enjoying it right now and there's something it's like to have that experience mm -hmm. from the inside and you can never find out what that's like from the inside. You cannot, as it were, enter this strange territory. It sounds right. Yeah, now that sounds right. It sounds as if the mind is like a secret garden mm -hmm. hidden behind a wall that is not, not merely a physical barrier mm -hmm. like my skull is, mm -hmm. but it is, it's necessarily, in principle, unbreachable, a kind of metaphysical barrier. And so we have this picture then of the outer world. You're saying that's an illusion? Well, I'm suggesting that it might be How? an illusion. Well, so we have this inner territory, the inner world, and then there's the outer territory, which would include my physical body and, and my behavior. Let me just say that once this picture has got a grip of your thinking, you can, you're immediately struck by a number of classic philosophical problems. How does this strange territory, this inner landscape, relate to the, the outer physical world? What's the connection between the two? That is the mind-body problem. How do I know that you have such an inner landscape? I can never find out. Correct. I can get inside your brain. I can't get inside your mind. So the problem of other minds is immediately generated by this picture. Um, and if, and, and, and I'm trapped behind the wall within this inner world. I, I, how do I know that there is a physical world? out there, perhaps it's all an illusion, right? So, you know, the, pro the problem of knowledge of the external world is generated by this picture. So a whole host of classical philosophical conundrums are generated by this inner outer picture. And in his later period, uh, the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein suggests that actually we don't need solutions to those classic philosophical problems. We need the therapy that will make the picture go away because it is an illusion. Now, which is the illusion? You say it. The, what is the it? The illusion is this picture of the mind as being a private garden, a private place behind a, a metaphysically impenetrable. So the barrier. burden is on you and Ludwig to yeah. explain it. Now, to now this is the tricky bit. Obviously. <laughs> this is the bit I'm not so sure I can do. Here's a first move. Sometimes when you think when you think you're dealing with some deep metaphysical barrier, actually the barrier is an illusion. And it's actually, it's a kind of a shadow cast by language. So for example, it looks like no surface can be both red and green all over simultaneously, right? Uh, wow, that's, now that's a very strange fact, isn't it? Because it, it appears not just to be a kind of a law of physics, it seems to be a kind of a law of metaphysics that the two mm -hmm. surfaces you know, that a single surface cannot exhibit both colours at the same time. It's as, it's as if there's some sort of metaphysical force at work in the world preventing this yeah. mm -hmm. state of affairs from ever occurring. Um, but actually, there ain't no 
such metaphysical force out there in the world. The, 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 the impossibility lies in the language. Mm. There are rules of language that prevent us meaningfully combining words in such a way that we could describe a surface, you know, a surface in, as being red and green all over simultaneously. Similar, similarly, you know, four-sided triangles, you ain't going to find one. Why? Because that combination of words makes no sense, not because there's some cosmic force out there that prevents the triangles from having four sides. Um, similarly, you're not going to find, you know, a, a married bachelor. Why? Why can't you do it? Is something stopping you? No. <laughs> this is a state of affairs which actually makes no sense. That combination of words makes no sense. It isn't as if there's some external force out there doing anything. Now, if we taking that general point, if we think about I can't feel your pain, for example, it seems as if we're talking about some strange metaphysical force that prevents me from gaining access to some territory that's forever <laughs> private, forever hidden away. But what if I can't feel your pain? What if that articulates another linguistic rule? If it does, then the metaphysical barrier is an illusion. And if the metaphysical barrier is an illusion, then the territory that it delineates is an illusion too, and we have just removed the picture. Now, of course, everything here turns on a certain view about what's going on linguistically, um, that the prevention, as it were, really lies in the language rather than in metaphysically out there in reality. And I don't claim that I can make a watertight case for that, but that's the suggestion, that something like this kind of therapy is what we need if we really want to dissolve away the classical conundrums about the mind. Linguistic therapy, 